Welcome to the Global Symposium for Regulators 2024, GSR 24, being held here in Kampala, in Uganda. Well, I'm very pleased to be joined in the ITU studio today by Mr. Apollo Knights, who is the Director of the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Apollo Knights, welcome to the studio. Thank you, thank you for having me here. Now, can I start off by asking you, what is the significance for you of this year's Global Symposium for Regulators? Well, the significance, it's huge for, for, for my agency. I said I'm a regulator. Well, before I actually answer that specific question, I just want to say a little context for, for those who might never heard of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's a small island chain in the Eastern Caribbean. Its population is 100,000. And we have 32 islands with six inhabited, right? So, so that's how big we are compared to, say, Africa, right? But, um, the significance of this event is that it's for regulators, which one, which I believe the goal, the main goal of all regulators, I mean, we do a lot of things, but the main goal is connecting people. And I, that's what drives me every day. That's my passion, to connect persons. I, I want to see all my citizens who want to be connected are connected. That's the only way we could have a digital transformation of our economies, is to do everything you need to do. So we need to be connected. And the significance of being here is that I can meet other regulators, see what they're doing, but also most importantly, uh, as they mentioned yesterday, they have others here. They have, they have the companies are here, other stakeholders are here. In a converged world, we can't operate by ourselves. To regulate, we need companies to be there, we need the consumers, different, different groups. You can't do anything these days without being connected. Really? Yes, I, I just want to give you one example of why we need to be connected, at least every day. I mean, there are a number of different reasons, but our country just got hit with a Category 4 hurricane yesterday, yesterday morning. Yeah, so I say we're a multi-island state, and you might believe in these days of so much technology that we have so much resilience and the networks, we must be still connected somehow. But yesterday, after it passed through there, we could not reach some of our islands. And we're not reach some people. For example, my family there, I could not reach my mom. I don't know if she was okay or not. I'm my sister. So just a basic connectivity. That's just voice. I mean, just reaching, are you okay, not okay, was not there. And, and if you look at the reasons why so far, it's like some simple things. That one link in the chain. So, I mean, we just established a, a, a new network a few years ago, ECN network, which is supposed to work for this, uh, separate from the providers, supposed to be there, a lot of money spent in it just for this purpose, but on one of those islands, the, the tower, it snapped. So everything else is good, but it just broke. I mean, we don't know the reason why it broke. Everything is off. So that's the importance of being connected. It, it, it's to reach people, your family, do different things, but reach your loved ones and just to know if they're alive at times. So, I mean, that's, what, that's what's the most important part of being connected. That's a real life example. And, <clears> and, and, and um, just to continue, I was saying, the reason being here, at this point in time, at this year, GSR, as you see, it's regulating for impact and, and, and the issue of transformative technologies. I think we are at a stage in the world, I guess over the last two years, I guess especially, where things are gonna change, and very fast. As, as mentioned yesterday from uh, one of the panelists there, that we're gonna see more change in the next 10 years than we saw in the last 100 years of, because of AI. Right? And, and that's one of, I think, the main reason I'm here. So apart from trying to connect everyone, I still have to be looking ahead of the other impacts that come in, other, other stuff that are happening. So I just kind of look at the past and keep up. I still have to look ahead and mix it together. And being here allow us to meet, allow us to meet others, see where stuff is going, and see how we can work together. And, and that's one of the main reasons I'm here, along with some of my colleagues from, from the region. Even though it's halfway around the world, it takes two days to get here. I think that it's, impo it's important to be here. Absolutely. <clears throat> and it's interesting, as you mentioned, I mean, one can invest a lot in infrastructure. Uh, one can try and prepare for the most uh, emergency uh, crisis situations. But sometimes things happen that, yes. uh, uh, particularly, I say, in terms of communications, which are absolutely vital in times of crisis. Yes. And uh, I hope 
uh, that communications are restored quickly um, to uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and, and, uh, and that, uh, as I say, obviously that, that it re recovers from uh, the substantial hurricane, which of course was in the, in the news um, today. Yes, yes. In terms of best practices, how important are the best practice guidelines that uh, have, have been um, uh, promoted here? Right. Well, best practice is something good. But I, I have a personal view on best practice, which I always look at it as they change over time. So best practice is not something that always lasts for the next 10 to 15 years. And, and, and to get to be a best practice, it has to start somewhere. So I, I, I like to look at it at the point in time, and then we can analyze it and see how can we adapt them for our context. Even though we have the same goal globally of connecting everyone, how it's get done is different in different countries and what you do. So you have to look at it and see how you can look at this best practice maybe in Singapore or, or in Thailand. Is it applicable to my situation? Or maybe I have to tweak it a little, innovate it a little. So that's how I look at it. But I'm also willing to, to see if I, I can create my own best practice. So maybe do something new that it can spread and maybe in the future others make it the best practice. So I'm looking at from that both angles. So it, it's, it's important. And we have, have been always following the best practices of the GSA over the last 20 years or so. And we have used some of them in, in our own context. And I'll give you an example if, if you wish, which um, we have just done a revision of our Telecom Act, an especially important part of our universal service fund provisions, which before it was 20, 25 years, the last time it was done, which you just want to connect people to the telephone, internet, that was it. But now it's more than that. So, for example, a new change we have made to it is that we can now use that, the, the funds there to give venture funding to startups, which is very important to the whole ecosystem. So that, that's a big change. And, and, and those came from, from, from just our stuff over, over the years. And we don't have that in, in law in our country over the last year. Is there a message that you would like to convey to um, the delegates gathered here at GSR, but of course, a wider audience as well? Mm. Yeah, well, the message is that, that we, we need to work together and collaborate. And I, especially to the, to, the, to the bigger countries and, and the bigger companies, to try to see how I see the, the social part of it and not just look for the profit part of it. I mean, it's important to have profit so you can be sustainable as a business, but you need to look at the social parts and the programs where that's the only way we can connect everyone. Right, they're persons, so even if you have the, like the, the GNI and, and the 2% of it, if you're not working, you have zero income. But you still need to be connected for different purposes, different things. So we have to see how we can all work together, have a balance, and not just those who have a salary or working for a certain level can afford to be connected. But that, that, that's my, my little takeaway to everyone. Well, very wise words. Thank you very much indeed. Apollo Knights, uh, Director of the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission for St. Vincent and the Grandings, thank you for joining us in the studio and we look forward to catching up with you again in the very near thank future. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And uh, if you've enjoyed uh, this programme, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel as well as SoundCloud, uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for joining us.